Everybody, welcome back into the Pick and Roll NBA podcast with Jet and Sap, presented by Full Press Coverage. Sap, I'm very energized because I I felt uh, a great feeling of catharsis and happiness over this past weekend with the Celtics retirement of Kevin Garnett's jersey. Not only is he one of my favorite all-time players, favorite all-time Celtics, number five was also always my jersey number whenever I played sports. Um, so I have that, you know, strong connection to that number five. And I thought the retirement ceremony was really nice. And I, and I enjoyed, I watched it with my dad. Uh, we had a great time watching it, uh, and seeing all the, you know, the current and former players interacting, which, uh, is part of what I loved about all-star weekend, but this was sort of a Celtics version of that. Um, Mm -hmm. and it was, uh, we also got a, the final, uh, finally the reunion of the big three. Garnett, Pierce, and Ray Allen, a, a, uh, a sort of um, coming back together of uh, a mending of wounds, if you will. And all in all, I thought terrific ceremony. Yeah, I thought it was a really good ceremony seeing Garnett there, seeing Ray Allen there, obviously Pierce and so many of the players from the 07, 08 team. Rondo is still playing, although the Cavaliers weren't playing that day, I was surprised he didn't take a flight in to join the ceremony. Maybe he got turned off, going to be there. I think the icy relationship between Ray Allen and Rondo may take a while to thaw, if it ever does. Maybe they, never, yeah. Maybe never. They really despise each other. Unless KG gets them together and says, you know, let's knock it off. I, if I forgive Ray, then you can forgive Ray, but I, I think Ray's problem with Rondo is as much as Rondo's problem with Ray. No, it was a nice ceremony. Um, I thought Scalabrini's interview with Garnett was excellent. I thought he did a really, really good job. It it was kind of comical that as soon as they were seating players, I'm like, wow, Isaiah Thomas is there. Now Isaiah Thomas was there for Kevin Garnett when he was inducted into the basketball hall of fame. And we said Garnett his favorite player growing up. One of his idols, Isaiah Thomas, they have the Chicago connection. And I think Isaiah was there for NBA TV. And of course, when they showed the video of Isaiah Thomas talking about Garnett, he got booed. And then Mike Gorman (laughs) referenced that. I don't know if Mike Gorman knew that Isaiah Thomas was actually in the building because he said, that's pretty cool. They booed Isaiah Thomas. Uh, But give Isaiah Thomas credit for showing up. Uh, No, it was a very, very nice ceremony. And, and, you know, it's good that. Ray Allen and, and Garnett are, are now uh, buds again. I don't know how close they'll be. Obviously, Pierce and Garnett are extremely close. They were close before they were both Celtics. I mean, I think when they were in high school, yeah, mm-hmm. uh, close. I mean, they've had a great relationship. I believe they both still live in L.A. Um, yeah, and, bo- they both have play- houses in Malibu, I think, like down the street right. from each other. Yeah, and, and Ray Allen's a little bit different. I think Ray Allen's the kind of guy who's look, I don't know these people, but I'm just going by what you hear that he's a bit more of a loner. Like he's, he's just, he's a very regimented guy. The guy hasn't had a cheeseburger since his freshman year at Connecticut. And that's going back, you know, almost 30 years. He's a very disciplined, regimented guy. Um, so, you know, background was a little bit different than Garnett and Pierce who grew up in somewhat poverty, whereas Ray Allen, grew up, I wouldn't say in an affluent military family, family. military family educators. So, you know, he was more middle class. So I I think they're they're different places, but but it's good to see that Um, Garnett was as intense as ever, as he always is. I mean, Kevin Garnett's intense ordering breakfast, I'm sure, Um, you know, but uh, I think richly deserved. Look, the guy played six years here. He was, the biggest reason they won that championship. And I know at your age, Jet, if they hadn't won that championship, you as a huge Celtics fan would have never witnessed the championship because before that, the last one was in 1986. So anybody who's 40 or younger would have never seen a championship by the Boston Celtics who have 17 of them without that 08 team, you know, led by Kevin Garnett, who was key fact in that team winning. So I would say, I think he did have his number retired and uh, he was a phenomenal player. I'm going to push back a little, little bit because it kind of carries himself life player in the history of the league, extremely confident. Um, 
at times as someone who's not a Celtics fan is a little bit of a turnoff. I think he's one of the 25 greatest players in the history of the sport. Certainly not one of the top five, but he carries himself as that guy. Um, and I think that's why Celtic fans, <laughs> but that's why I think Celtic fans love him. You know, he, that's how he carries himself. And um, yeah, he's, he's a fabulous player. And like I've said before, the the next play he took off would have been the first play he ever took off. The guy busted his ass every time out there on the court. And I think he was always a great team player. Yeah. I think, you know, the only pushback from people uh, about him getting his number retired and there were very few who pushed back on it was that he was just here for six years, but right. uh, you know, it's, he changed the whole culture and I know that's become sort of uh, the, the, you know, the mantra to change the culture, change the culture, but it's true. And, you know, in my lifetime, he was the first superstar player the Celtics ever had. And, you know, Pierce was a star player. Garnett was, you know, he had already won an MVP. Right. Um, you know, Pierce is as excellent of a player as he was and, and is a deserved Hall of Famer and has a ton of accolades and stuff. Never really sniffed winning an MVP award. Um, you know, that's that's rarefied air and Garnett. You know, you could certainly make a case of uh, he's one of, if not the best defensive player of his era. Um, mm -hmm. and, and, you know, so, I mean, he was the first guy to come in and play for the Celtics in my lifetime. That was like, holy crap, this is an all time great player that's playing on my favorite team. And, mm -hmm. you know, he, they, he immediately made the Celtics into a, a credible championship contender. And then, you know, they went on and won the championship and, and, Cam damn close to winning a second one uh, a few years later. Um, so I think just deserving because of how dire things were before he got here and, and how miserable it had been for a long time. And so when you're talking about retiring somebody's number, you, you, you talk about impact that they had on the franchise and on the fan base. And I mean, in my lifetime, nobody's had as big of an impact as, Kevin Garnett on the Celtics franchise, even in just six years here. So I absolutely, I think well-deserved to have his number retired. You could see how much it meant to him um, to have his number retired here and how, uh, in addition to that sap, how great of an ambassador he is to the Boston Celtics who need strong player ambassadors because they've been dinged a lot recently with the Kyrie stuff and the trading, the Isaiah Thomas with the injury thing didn't look good. So they need players to step up and say, yeah, it was great playing in Boston. It was the highlight of my career. The only, the biggest mistake I ever made in my career was not coming to Boston earlier. Like that's important for the franchise to have all time. Great players like that singing the praises of being a Boston Celtic. Yeah. Before he got here, if you remember the 06, 07 season, they lost 18 in a row. They, they were tanking because they wanted to get the first pick in the draft. Greg Oden went first. Kevin Durant went second. They ended up with the fifth pick took Jeff Green and then flipped him for Ray Allen. And Ray Allen's importance is obviously big because once they got Ray Allen, was able to bring Kevin Nett because now he looked at it and said, hmm, they got Paul Pierce, Ray Allen. These guys are multiple-time All-Stars. That piqued interest, and ultimately he came to the six. But that 06, 07 season, I remember pretty vividly, they had a package jet where it was 40 bucks and – you got tickets to four games for five. Oh, I must bucks. have gone to 20 games that year, Sap, because yeah, I was a, I was a senior in high school. I could drive. Uh, I remember. And yeah. so we'd go to games all the time because they were, uh, I mean, tickets were cheap as hell. Th there was that package. I, I remember buying this. And when I bought it, I'm like, is this a scam? Like for 40 <laughs> bucks, you could go to four games. That's 10 bucks a game. Like, w where are you going for 10 bucks? And no, it wasn't. You know, it showed up. Me and a buddy each bought this package. So it's for 80 bucks. We went to four games each. And I think you'd get a Diet Coke and a hot dog. It was like, man, they're really begging people to go. I remember calling the garden and asking them what time the game was. And the answer was, what time can you make it? I mean, that's right. how death. <laughs> yeah. So we'll it, wait for you. I'm like, and at that point, you're like, okay, <laughs> I'm going to go to a Cavalier game because I want to watch LeBron. Um, you know, the Laker games, I think they pretty much shut out for that because it's the Lakers. Yeah. Although by then, Kobe was by himself. It wasn't Shaq anymore. But, you know, you'd pick whoever. You, who cares? For 10 bucks, it's NBA well, Sap, basketball. Pierce was hurt that year. Well, hurt. Uh, yeah. You know, they held him out. Their best player was Tony Allen. And that was like a bright spot. And then he blew out his, tore his ACL on a dunk. 
I remember that. Was, everything that went wrong, c- could have gone wrong, went wrong that year, including the lottery, where they got the worst possible pick they could based on their odds. Yeah, it was crazy. I mean, because I think everyone was thinking Greg Oden, because all we heard is he's the next Bill Russell. And Danny Ainge just said, oh, I would have taken Durant anyways. I don't believe that. But, you know, if you would have been able to take Durant. What would have happened if they took Durant? Um, People would have been very upset and then very happy. Yeah, I mean, if, if they had had the second pick in that draft jet and taken Kevin Durant, they probably don't get Garnett because they wouldn't have had the player to get Ray Allen unless they decide to trade Durant to Seattle for Ray Allen, which I think would have been problematic. And that would have not given them the ammunition to then bring in Kevin Garnett. So your future would have been Paul Pierce and a 19 year old Kevin Durant, which look, I mean, that, that may have worked as well. I mean, obviously Durant pretty quickly was, yeah, you, you trade you would trade Pierce at that point. Pierce wouldn't have stayed on the team, Sap. I, I would imagine, right? Right. Yeah. So you, yeah, you it, now you build around Durant. Yeah. Um, so, so, but it's completely different. Who knows if you ever win a championship? Who knows if you know? We know Durant has bolted from two places. Who knows yeah. if he stays in Boston? Um. So, I, I, yeah, the Garnett jersey thing, no brainer to me. Uh, I, I he didn't have to, you know, say that about Ray Allen when he was doing his his, you know speech and reconcile with him, which I thought was very gracious of him. And it was very gracious of Ray Allen to show up despite all the seemingly bad blood. And Garnett said, you know, Ray Allen's jersey should be next. I know some people agree with that. Our friend, Mike Molino, I am not inclined to retire Ray Allen's jersey. I have now forgiven him sap because Kevin Garnett forgave him. So I might as well. Um, But uh, again, it's about impact and, Garnett had an impact on the entire franchise. I don't that I don't know many other people could have had. Ray Allen was excellent while he was with the Celtics. He played a year less than the than Garnett did here, and just didn't have nearly the same type of all around impact. So I, I wouldn't. I kind of get the feeling that the Celtics ownership will because they just sort of go whatever way the wind blows. And right now the wind's blowing in retire his jersey. Yeah, I mean, it's probably going to happen because they have far too many numbers retired anyway, and they did win a championship. And again, maybe they sell it as, well, we got Ray Allen. That led us to Kevin Garnett because Garnett wouldn't have come unless we got Ray Allen, and he was an integral part of this championship. And then Garnett also said Rondo should go up there and, like, you know, where does it end at that point? So um, it's probably going to happen. But I, I think pretty much Celtic Nation has forgiven Ray Allen now. He showed up and – Kevin Garnett gave the big hug and Pierce came out and hugged them all. And look, if Garnett's then people should forgive Ray Allen. I'm not sure what they're forgiving him for. He, how many times was it rumored that they was going to get traded or he was going to have to be a sixth man come off the bench. Uh, he went to their biggest competition and he didn't tell Garnett and Pierce he was going it, That was not cool. Uh, whatever. He, he went to my favorite team at that point and helped my <laughs> player win a championship. So suck on that. He did. He did do that. Uh, if you listen to Skip Bayless, he's the only reason LeBron won that championship. Oh, yeah. Well, LeBron would have no titles without these other guys, Kyrie Irving and Ray Allen. It's not like Michael Jordan ever won a title because some other guy hit a shot like, I don't know, Steve Kerr or John Paxson or Scotty Pippen. No, I don't think so. Out. Never. No one helped Jordan. He all right, Seth. All the- <laughs> you wanted to go through the Celtics retired numbers because you think there's too many of them. You can never have too many retired numbers. I believe they're of 24 retired yes. numbers, which is so a quarter of, uh, of well, I guess if you count double zero. So, yeah, a quarter of their number is possible. They've retired now, right? Yep. Okay. So let's go through these and you tell me if you think that they should have their number retired, yes or no. Does that sound reasonable? Sounds good. Okay. We'll start with – I'll just do it – I'm not going to do it by the order they got them retired. I'm just going to do it by the sequential order of the number. Right, like double zeros, Robert Parrish. Right. Okay. So Robert Parrish, double zero. Yes. Should Absolutely. be retired. Okay. Yep. No, no brainer. Um, currently zero is Jason Tatum. So he's working on that. Um, one is Walter Brown, the Walter. founder of the team. Right. Which is fine. I mean, okay. you know, that's good. So you're good with that. No, yep. number one. Number two is the retired for Red Auerbach. You okay with that? Absolutely. Okay. Uh, number three, Dennis Johnson. 
Dennis Johnson was one of my favorite players. He was key in two championships, played seven years here. I'm fine with DJ being retired. It, it's probably my favorite for me because, I, you know, I was covering the team at that point, and Dennis Johnson's one of my favorite guys to have ever dealt with. Um, he was, you know, win or lose, you could go up to his locker and ask questions, and he was always accommodating, so maybe I'm looking at it that way. But, yeah, I'm a big fan of DJ. And, look, when they – they had gone a couple of years without going to the finals and they could not stop Andrew Tony anytime they faced him, you know, when they played the 76ers and they got Dennis Johnson here to do that. And, you know, the Celtics won two more championships. So I'm fine with DJ. Uh, Bill Russell's number six. I'm going to guess you're going to say yes yeah, to that one. I think he deserves to be retired. I, you know, I, I'll go as far as say the league should retire his number. You, you know what? That wouldn't be a bad idea. Just like the baseball oh. did with Jackie Robinson's 42. Yeah. Yeah. Bill Russell's number six, certainly. Uh, though then, you know, you would probably say people are doing it for LeBron. Well, you know. <laughs> um, all right, JoJo White, number 10. Yeah, that's fine. Two championships, multiple all-stars. Again, one of the classiest athletes I've ever met. Died much younger than you would think. I mean, the guy was still looked like he could still play, and then he died four years ago, I think at 70 years old, and was so sad. Uh, Jojo White, absolutely. Uh, Bob Cousy, number 14. Fourth greatest Celtic ever, so that makes sense. Tommy Heinsohn, number 15. Absolutely. Uh, Satch Sanders, number 16. This gets complicated. Satch Sanders, I believe, played on seven championship teams. He never made the all-star team. He was the ultimate role player. I mean, his career stats are similar to Robert Ory's. Eight championship Again, teams. Eight championship teams. Okay. Um, again, one of the classiest individuals you'll ever meet. I mean, man, it works for the team. Does yeah. I mean, he's he is just man. When you meet him, you walk away feeling better. I mean, he's just one of those types of people. But I don't know about his number of championship teams. But you know, again, he was a guy who was a borderline starter, more of a bench guy. Although he's in the basketball hall of fame i'd say no to satch and again love the guy but i I, again at some point you gotta start eliminated some of these retired numbers they're not going to but i would all right well you're so you're dead to satch sanders now he does not like you anymore no um john havlicek's number 17 third greatest celtic ever yes dave cowan's number 18 yes uh don nelson number 19 no he was, I don't even think he's good a player at Sanders, won a lot of championships, hit a big shot in the 69 finals, but again, never made an all-star team. I would say no to Nelly. And I loved Nelly because Nelly was a Bucks coach when I was a big Bucks fan because of Marcus Johnson and Sidney Moncrief. And I thought he was a fabulous coach. He's, he's in the hall of fame as a coach, uh, but I'd say no to retiring Nelly's number. Uh, he is in the Hall of Fame as a coach. He was just recently, last week, surpassed by Greg Popovich for the most wins of all time uh, in NBA history. Uh, he has five titles with the Celtics, 11 years on the team, um, but you're saying no, 19 say, should come well, down. The, you know what's amazing? That he, he held that record for most wins by a coach up until last week. Never coached in the finals. That is really amazing. Really crazy. I mean, he had really good teams, but he happened to be coaching the Bucks when the Celtics in Philadelphia were just. Did a Lenny bit- Wilkins ever coach in the finals? Because he's third all time. Yes, Lenny Wilkins won a title. He was the head coach at Seattle. Oh, he, he was to, the Jack the Sigma final. coach. Yep, he went to the finals in seventy seven, seventy eight, lost to Washington, and then the next year beat Washington. So he did win a title, went to two finals, and Don Nelson right now is somewhere in Hawaii getting high. I yeah, can guarantee. Oh, no, good, good for him. Oh, yeah. That's nice. Nice life. Um, Bill Sharman, number 21. Yes, without question. Um, Easy Ed McCauley. 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 Uh, he's number McCauley. 22. Oh. I, I'm trying to figure this out. Now, do you have his numbers up there? Or uh, Let's see. Played six seasons for the Celtics. Uh, three of those, he was on All-NBA's first team. And one of those, he was on the All-NBA's second team. Uh, all-star game, most valuable player, uh, in the first ever all-star game and is in the hall of fame. Uh, he played for the Celtics from 
51 to 56. Now, he's most famous for being the guy they traded to get the pick to draft Bill Russell. Correct. So maybe that's why his numbers retired, because they traded him to get the pick for Bill Russell. And we know the, you know, the rest is history. So he was their first great player. Yeah. You know what? He didn't win a championship, but he led. (laughs) He got the guy here who won 11 in 13 years. So let's put him in. And again, his numbers are great. Uh, and probably when they trade, people are like, "Why wow, you're trading for the second draft?" And go back knew that Russell was going to be that great. Maybe he didn't Bill Russell was going to be that great, but Bill was that great. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll put it. I'll put him up there again because six year talking about all star, all NBA type. Put him in there. I'm going to give a big move. That's that's generous of you. Thank you, Seth. Uh, his, I'm sure his family I, thanks yeah. you. They do. Um, Family, yes. Frank Ramsey, number 23. No. No, I know he was famous for being like the first sixth man. No. Seven seven titles. Yes. They, they, a lot of guys <laughs> won title with Bill Russell. Well, maybe this will sway you, Sap. He led the team in free throws made in 1957. Does that help you? Yes. Yeah, let's retire this number because of that. I'm sure Steve <laughs> Kerr led the Bulls in free throw percentage at least several it's an times. Odd little tidbit that the Celtics put on his little blurb. They yes. led the team in free throws made in 1957. Okay. Yep. That is odd. Yep. Let's put him in. Um, <laughs> no, I don't think his number should be retired. So, he's gonna, you know, tw- so 23 should come down from the Raptors, yep. is what you're saying. Yes. That maybe should be retired by the league. That, for, yes. For Jordan. Yeah, I could see that. Or LeBron. Is that, LeBron no, not, gets not LeBron. your own number. LeBron, why don't you get your own number? I've always pleaded him on this. Like, he wore 23 and, you know, who wore 23 it was Jordan and for a while, Kobe, right? Kobe wore 23. Yep. 20, oh, okay. No, sorry, 24. Kobe was 20, 8 and 24. If I'm LeBron, we're 25. Like, yeah. And, and say I'm better than 23 and I'm better than 24. Like Kobe wore 24 because in his mind, he felt he was better than Jordan. Probably. I mean, cause yeah. you know, I don't think Kobe lacked confidence and LeBron's like, Oh, I want to be Mike. Um, and actually I think Kobe's favorite player growing up was magic. So, you know, whatever, but, and now he's wearing six. It's like, come on, LeBron, get your own number. Yeah, I mean, I Barry, Bonds, Barry, Bonds wore, Barry Bonds were 24 in Pittsburgh, but when he went to San Francisco, he wore 25. Willie Mays wore 24. Bonds one number better than Willie Mays. So yeah. And there you go. But Barry Bonds did not lack confidence, that's for sure. <laughs> no, no. Uh well you backed it up, which is what the you know the biggest thing yeah. is. Um just, all right. At not 20... in the Hall of Fame. No. no, not in the Hall of Fame. Doesn't sorry. That that doesn't count. Um yeah, he doesn't belong in there. Twin number twenty four is retired for Sam Jones, and number twenty five is retired for Casey Jones. Sam Jones, definitely. Sam Jones is in the running. Like I've, I've always said, the greatest Celtic is Bill Russell, followed by Bird, followed by Havlicek, followed by Kuzi. I think Garnett, in terms of entire career, is ahead of Kuzi. But mm-hmm. as, as guys who played like you know 90% of their careers with the Celtics, those are the big four. Sam Jones is in the running for the fifth greatest Celtic with the likes of, I think, Paul Pierce. I would also put Kevin McHale. I would put Cowan, Robert Parrish, even Tommy Heinsohn. I mean, there's a bunch of guys that are in there, but Sam Jones is one of those guys. Sam Jones is, I think, the most underrated, overlooked Celtic of all time. I don't think people realize how great that guy was. Yeah. Uh, you know, that happens when you play most of your career with Bill Russell. Right. Yep. <laughs> Casey Jones, again, one of my favorite people. I mean, he coached the Celtics while I was in there. And again, That's why. I think his, so his number was retired in 1968, well before he ever coached the team. His number should be retired, in my opinion, because of the, the, the dual contributions to the franchise. Yeah, but, but when yeah, they retired in 68, that was excessive because his stats are, are not very good. Oh, he was he was a guy who was a, he was a great defensive player. He played with Russell at the University of San Francisco. I mean, he won almost as much as Russell. I think he's got 10 championships as a player in the NBA. Also, two at the University of San Francisco, an Olympic gold medalist. Uh, he was 
that's a good, it's kind of tough. I not putting Satch Sanders and Don Nelson in, but I'm going to, I would put Casey Jones in because I am going to bring in the coaching aspect. Yeah. You get of, credit for that. Yeah. And, and again, I, once again, like Satch Sanders just is classy and individuals I've ever met um, was a joy to deal with as a coach. I mean, again, win or lose, you go in the locker room and they didn't lose much back then. You just go over there and he'd, he'd have time for you. And, and he was just a great, great guy. So, okay. I'll, I'll, so keep I'll, 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 I'm going to be with that guy. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to keep, keep Casey. And that's probably sometimes more personal than the thing. And, but I was around that team. So that's what. I, I, I think he deserves it because like I said, one championships as a player and a coach for the same franchise. I think you yeah. remember retired. He just kept winning. I mean, wherever Casey Jones was, he won in Washington as a head coach, went to the finals there. He, you know what? Here's, you know, people talk about, well, you know, this Rondo won with the Lakers and the Celtics. Casey Jones was the assistant coach of the Lakers on the 71 72 championship team. It's just like Casey Jones showed up and teams won. Yeah, this got that golden touch. Um, yeah. All right, moving on to the next number. Cedric Maxwell's 31 was retired in 2003. Because the Celtics retired so many numbers, I'm going to say yes on that. I'm kind of happy about that because, you know, there was a falling out between Red Auerbach and Maxwell. Then they made up, and now, he, you know, he's, he's part of the organization, doing a great job on radio, and, you know, such a character. And let's not forget, the man was a finals MVP in 1981 when, you know, you had Larry Bird and Moses Malone at the court, um, and he was the MVP of the finals. And in 84 – when they were playing the Lakers, he was huge. He was huge in that series. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll put Max in there. All right, 31 is stays in the Raptors. Kevin McHale's 32. Yep, pretty easy. Uh, Larry Bird's 33. What do you think? Yeah, I think he belongs up there. Okay, so we'll Larry. stay with that. Yeah, we'll keep Larry up there. Paul Pierce is 34. Yep. Um, Reggie Lewis is number 35. I know that is a controversial <laughs> one. Yeah. That's a tough one. He was headed in that direction, right? I mean, so he, six years all with the Celtics. Yeah, um, I mean, really win all-star, anything. One time All Star was the captain of the team in ninety two, ninety three. I mean, I'm going to sound like an asshole by saying no, right? Because the, the guy. I don't died. know. You know, it's you're allowed to do that. It's. I mean, listen, he. He got his jersey retired, not because of the total amount right. of contributions yeah. he made to the team, but because of, you know, he died while he was still on the team. That's I, that's not I'm not trying to say that to be disrespectful. That's just that's a fact. Yeah. I mean, is there something too with his family or state? They're like, well, we're retiring number and who knows? Because it, it's not that he died without some strange circumstances. Right. right. I mean, there was a lot of. Well, did the Celtics misdiagnose him? Did this other doctor, doctor, you know, there was a lot going on there. You know, I, I don't think Reggie was 30. He was like 28 when he died. Right. You know, pro so athlete. He died in 1993 in July. They retired his number in 95, March 95. Yeah, I, I'd say no. And, you know, I just hope I don't get stricken to death tonight <laughs> by saying that because it does sound you know rather callous. But yeah, I'll, I'll say no. Again, he, he's up there because he died at a very young age, not necessarily because of his basketball accomplishments. But again, he was he was kind of heading in that direction. Right. But, you know, they don't have Len Bias's number retitled. Although I, I get it. He never played a game. Well, with but, you know, for example, let's say Reggie Lewis, you know, was heading that direction or just any player from any team. Same stats. Let's say Brandon Roy. OK, uh, mm-hmm. Brandon Roy on the trail was, was absolutely heading in that direction. Blew oh, yeah. out his knees. Couldn't play anymore. Yep. I don't think they're going to retire his number in Portland, though they don't have many, so they might. Uh, it, if Reggie Lewis had blown out his knees and couldn't play anymore, they wouldn't yeah. have retired his number. No. Great point. Yeah, so I, 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 I'd I, say no to Reggie. And again, uh, I, I know that that sounds... And you said it first, so oh, you look like the yeah. a-hole and not me, so I'm glad. Yeah, they... <laughs> um, and the last uh, last two, uh, last one we got is Jim Luskatoff. Uh, his n- name is retired, not a number. So do you have a problem with that? That's fine. Only because my has dated Luskatov's granddaughter. So oh, I w- wow. yeah, says that um, 
anytime they need to go to a game, uh, she calls her mother, who's Luskatov's daughter, and a phone call is made, and they get like two seats in a luxury box. So here's why I'm okay with it. He's it's not a, a, no. He, no. He's a University of Oregon grad. I knew you were going to say that. <laughs> You gotta have a you gotta have the duck up there. So let's keep Lusky up there. And again, I and think then, he, and then Pritchard in a few years. Yeah, that's gonna happen. <laughs> question. I think too is Luskatov when they were talking about it, he he was like, You're gonna retire my number. I guess the name is fine. So Yeah, yeah he that, said no. He said don't he said yeah. don't retire the number. No, he's like and then it, it was became, eighteen oh, and then Dave Cowens yeah, were eighteen. Cowans so it ended up getting it. retired anyway. <laughs> yeah, let's leave Lusky up there, especially since you know his granddaughter occasionally dates my nephew. Um, it said, uh, the little blurb about him, uh, his best season was in 1956, 57. When the Celtics won their first title, he averaged 10 points and 10 rebounds a game. This is solid, yeah. but, uh, yeah, if it was a number, I'd say no name. Fine. Yeah, absolutely. And I think he won like three, five, seven, cha- seven championships. Yeah. Including six for- straight. <laughs> And from what I understand, he uh, back then when you he won a played, cha- played nine seasons, he won seven. Chances. Yeah, he was you know, he had a better percentage than just the, than Jordan. One, one more title than Jordan. And the thing is, when those guys won back then, the money they won for winning the championship, not that it was a huge amount of money by today's standards, but by those standards, it was big, right? You know. And I think he parlayed all that money and bought property in Southern California and, and you know, parlayed it into a, a nice investment. Yeah. good investment. Look, uh, Buddy LaRue was the trainer for the Celtics. And I think he was the trainer on like 10 Celtics championship teams. And he say it was $20,000 yeah. that you got for winning the championship. I think he just put that into one account at like $200,000. I'm just using numbers to, you know, to move on with the story. And he took that and, and built, you know, like the new England rehab center or whatever, because I mean, back then $200,000 was a lot of money. You could buy like a huge condo complex uh, today. $200,000 isn't even a down payment right. on a house, but back then you do that. So they, I mean, those guys, when they won those championships, it was important. I remember 1970, the Bruins won the Stanley cup, Phil Esposito, one of the all time greatest players in league history, you know, when the Bruins won the cup, they knew they were getting like $18,000, $24,000 for winning the cup. And they said, well, what, what are you going to do this summer? He goes, oh, I'm so relieved for the first time in my life. I don't have to help my father on the farm because yeah. <laughs> he, he had enough money. I mean, could you picture like, you know, Tom Brady or Aaron Rodgers or LeBron James saying, you know, well, for winning the Super Bowl, it like, changes my life. It doesn't really give them anything in terms of financial no. uh, impact. I mean, that's a joke to them. They actually, they're playing, paying, um, getting paid less per game than they do in the regular season. That's I mean, true. For, yeah. Aaron Rodgers is going to make $3 million a game next year. Like, you know, he, he takes a pay cut to go to the playoffs, and sometimes he plays like that. Yeah. Yes, that's true. Um, all right. So the last question I'm going to ask you then, Sap, is who's next? What's the next jersey that goes up in the rafters? Well, I'm going to look at, the current guys, I, I look, Ray Allen, we kind of talked about that. It's probably going to happen, right? Because, I mean, the Celtics put more numbers up than they probably should. I don't think Rondo's going to go up there. No. Although, you know, he had a big impact on that team. So let's say Ray Allen. But if it's not him, let's look at the current guys. I mean, Jason Tatum's heading in that direction. He's only played in. My brother, who's nine years older than me, and I've had a lot of family references, but what the hell? These are personal stories. My brother's nine years older than me. is a huge Celtics fan. Like, I mean, he can go back. He remembers the Russell titles pretty much, you know, 80% of them. So he's seen a lot of titles. He thinks Jason Tatum is the best scorer the Celtics have ever had. You know, he said, he, I mean, he said Bird was Possible. great. He says, but this kid, he goes, this kid is ridiculous. Like, this is a guy who could win a scoring title. I mean, look at these. It's so got- hard to tell now because, you know, the game is so different. Sports like, change. What, would, yeah. what the hell would Larry Bird have, you know, shot oh. from three? Oh, God. Yeah. If, if Larry Bird hucked up eight three pointers a game and hit four of them, I mean, that's another, you know, because they didn't take them in the 80s all that much. Yeah. And then the ability to get to the line. But my, my brother said that this kid is the best he's seen in terms of that. Like, he's just like unstoppable. So I think Tatum, obviously, 
is probably the easy answer. I mean, Jalen Brown, your guy, Marcus Smart, I mean, if he plays his entire career and they win a championship, you kind of get the feeling his number is going to go up there, right? Just because yeah. he's like Celtic. I have a feeling that the next number that's going to go up is Danny Ainge's number. Okay. Now, yeah, because, I mean, you could put him up there. I mean, look, Red Auerbach is number two and Walter Brown's number one. I mean, obviously, Danny Ainge would go up as an executive, right? Yeah. It, well, you'd say, you know, the dual executive player, you know, yeah. you retire 44 because he's, you know, that was his number when he was with the Celtics. Uh, won yeah. two championships with the title, one as the general manager. Um, so, and I, I think he still has a good relationship with Wick though. The, the end last year was weird. Um, it was weird, yeah. It, and they were, it, it, and so if that soured, maybe no, but up until then they were like inseparable. Right. And yeah. I, I mean, I'm wondering where that is right now. They weren't anywhere close to each other in the seating arrangement, but that, I mean, look, look, he's not Wick. Um, it's Wick's decision. I mean, yeah. this is, a, I think this is like a committee where they go to seven guys, you and know, say and, that as much as they want. It's the owner of the team. It's Wick. Just, <laughs> yeah. I think it's Wix more than anyone, right. Of all the owners. Yes. Uh, yeah. That, that would be interesting. I mean, he was, I would say for 90% of his run here as general manager, he was pretty well beloved. He was beloved as a player, um, you know? So yeah, that that's actually a pretty good one. Uh, so that's that's my guess. Uh, and but we will we will see. And uh, I anxiously and eagerly await the next uh, Jersey retirement ceremony. Yep. Sap, yep. So we can discuss it uh, when we're doing the show, whenever, whenever in the future that may be. But uh, that's going to do it for us here at the Pick and Roll NBA podcast with Jet and Sap. Uh, make sure you uh, check out the podcast wherever podcasts are found. And uh, thanks to full press coverage, who always is, uh, you know, presenting the show. And uh, check out our social medias too, John Sap25 at Jet Stryer, and uh, get all sorts of great tweets, retweets, polls, all that good stuff. And we will talk to you guys later. See you, everybody.